Hello and welcome to episode 70, today we are looking at the third and final offering from the Crystal Screen series of game and watches manufactured and sold worldwide by Nintendo, with today's star and focus being called Balloon Fight. With this beautiful handheld first being offered for sale November 19, 1986, where it's often estimated to have sold somewhere in the region of a quarter of a million units. But before we barrel headlong into today's show, I wanted to take a few moments to answer last week's photo quiz teaser, which we on our channel call, What in the World? And as you can see here written on the screen, it's asking, did you know what this was? Well, here's the grand reveal, and for me, that Nintendo logo was the biggest giveaway, and then there's those sleek purple buttons, it's easy to see now. It's the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, computer-style mouse controller, Nintendo sold this hardware as an add-on accessory in support of the game called Mario Paint, back in 1992. So, did you guess it correctly? As we return our attention back to today's star and focus, we see the cover of the instructions booklet, wonderfully illustrated and in full color. Given the production code of BF-803 this handheld completes the crystal screen series for Nintendo. After the standard table of contents we see an overview on the object of this game, giving the player the insights into what the characters are, who the enemies represent, and who are our heroes. Next we are presented with a labeled schematic of the unit, identifying controls and their functions. Before we get to read about the battery requirements, such as the need for a single lithium CR2025, 3 volt cell battery that was supplied with the original brand new unit. Setting both the time and alarm was an important aspect of these units, as the device was used as a practical timepiece. Lacking a stand likely limited the practical application, as too did the low volume of the speakers fitted to the crystal screen series, however being a game and watch, these functions were required. Next up is our game's characters, we have the hero, called Balloon Man, who's with the Sky Patrol, then we see the boss of the baddies, he's called Oirum Repus, interestingly this is Super Mario spelt backwards. Anyhow, Oirum is the boss of the Sky Pirates. The balloons have attached to them fragments of a ripped up map, and Balloon Man must recover these fragments to remake that map, this will locate the hideout. And lastly, we see sparks, these are very dangerous and must be avoided. In the how to play section, the various controls, such as the eject, direction and warp buttons are explained, this is just before we look at the detailed instructions on actually starting the game. The key here is collecting 25 balloons, after you do this, you'll change phase, there will be a blinking floor, this will allow you to warp into a special bonus phase, or, if you miss warping, or simply fail to complete the bonus phase, you'll return to the previous normal playing level you've just left. And, interestingly after you complete 8 phases, you'll face off against the boss man, in a timed event where he'll throw sparks at you. The instructions also explain that you need to maintain 100 points or more to enable a new life and respawn, otherwise the game ends as you have no further lives left. The method for controlling the jet pack, as well as collecting balloons, together with the two ways you can lose a life finish up this section of the booklet. The point scoring can be quite complicated, as there is a consecutive catch system formula, that allows for ever greater points to be awarded the more balloons that are caught without losing a life. Interestingly Nintendo include an official hack, or cheat, that allows you to jump straight the level 17, which is explained here, as is the required skills to both hover and dive while flying. The various precautionary statements are swiftly followed up with the care and maintenances of the unit itself, as well as the detailed use and ultimately disposal of the batteries. Rounding out all of this in the instructions booklet, is the technical specifications. Balloon Fight was supplied with an unusual accessory, that the two previous crystal screen series of game and watches lacked. This was a transparent sleeve that slips over the console, and is then positioned over the screen to give a complementary mountainous background during actual gameplay. This sleeve adds a cleverly designed concept, that complements the actual gameplay, additionally when it is slid into place, also adds a certain depth to the game, while retaining the unique transparency aspect of this range of game and watches. The contents of Balloon Fight Crystal Screen, minus the original battery are shown here. And as for today's viewing of representational gameplay, I have to make it clear it is identical to the previously reviewed new widescreen series, which we covered during episode 51, we will discuss this a little more later on, as well as adding a link in the description section below, therefore today will only be a quick look at the gameplay, and episode 51 will be the more detailed source, this is to prevent excessive duplication. So, here you control Balloon Man, and the object is to collect balloons, sounds easy enough if it wasn't for the fact that you have to control him by using an eject button to keep him from crashing into the sea. You also steer him left or right, and at the same time you also have to watch out for the sparks, that are scattered around the screen. 
If you land on a blinking floor, this indicates the start of a bonus round, you'll need to press the warp button, and then you will be warped to a fantastic bonus phase. Once you have collected more than 25 balloons you will proceed to the next phase. Remember that I mentioned the exciting boss levels earlier, these will appear after completion of every 8 phases, and these battles are timed events, in which you have to capture Oirum Repus, the boss of the Sky Pirates. During the fight, you must avoid getting hit by the sparks that he throws at you. Every time you hit a spark, crash into the sea, you score a miss, and you lose 100 points, and if you have less than that the amount of points remaining, the game will end. Well that just about wraps up our brief look at the gameplay, however, tune into episode 51 for a more detailed examination of this game. You can do this by simply following the link in the description section below. Sadly, these three crystal screen games actually represent the last series of the traditional game and watches ever issued by Nintendo, so this marks the end of an era to me. But we have thousands of pending episodes, and at least another four game and watches, so don't worry too much. However, we're at that stage in our show where I'm going to ask if you know what this photo represents? It's a Nintendo something and we call it what in the world? So do you know? If you do, I'd love to see your guess in the comments section, but if you're not sure simply tune in to next week's episode and we'll reveal the truth. So, as we run out this week's episode, I'll include the photographic montage of today's star and focus as a finale, seen from various angles. The Crystal Screen series is simply stunning I believe. So this wraps the range up quite nicely, however, I've got a limited edition, ultra rare game and watch ready for next week, and we will be covering the Nintendo Club issue of Ball 2, then there's the most recent two color screen handhelds, Mario and Zelda to showcase too. The Bass Mate, a fishing aid, that is nearly identical to a multi-screen game and watch, for those that know, we'll round out the game and watch segment from our channel. So please stay tuned, and, as always, a big and sincere thank you to all our viewers, you're the reason we're here and we think you're wonderful.